There is no method for not worrying. So if I, I'm a worrier, then the important thing to understand is that there exists no method, absolutely no method at all by which I can remedy this worrying or make it less or <clears throat> manage it. So this is a profoundly <clears throat> liberating thing to understand. It, it's the only liberating thing to understand. If we understand that there's no method to stop worrying, then that understanding is liberation. There is no other way to be liberated. There's certainly no way to be liberated by imagining that there is a method, which we do imagine. If we imagine that there is a method to stop our worrying, cure ourselves from the troubles that thought brings, then we're never, ever, ever going to be free because we're always, always, always going to be trying either to find the right method or to put the method which we believe to be right into practice. When we try to put the um, belief that we have of what the right method is into practice, then it won't work. It might appear to work temporarily, but really when um, <clears throat> we look at it, we realize that it doesn't work. And that could lead us to an understanding that there is no method. But it doesn't generally because we, we, assume that we're doing it wrong. We assume that the fault is with us, not with the, not with the assumption that there is a method for stopping worrying. Especially if everyone else is saying that there is a method, of course we're going to think the problem must be with us. Of course, we're much more likely to doubt ourselves than to doubt, to doubt the whole world or what appears to be um, an objective truth according to the whole world. So although we, we could have the insight as a result of repeatedly trying and failing, which would be a good thing to try and fail is a great thing. In, in, in psychological terms, not in physical terms, maybe. But, but in psychological terms, it's a great thing because that equals liberation. But that doesn't happen because we don't doubt our own insights. We don't even let the insights come to fruition. We just can't, we doubt them. We've been banjaxed, so we don't trust ourselves. That's actually the, the whole point of heteronomy, the whole point of the, the undercover message that um, the social system is giving us, which is expertise and knowledge and awareness and everything uh, exist outside of us. The right um, understanding of things exists outside of us. Everything exists outside of us. Which is completely 100% wrong. Because everything that exists on the outside is merely the um, play of thought, the circus, the circus of thought. The guy on the unicycle, the, um, the clown, the acrobats, um, the lion tamer, whatever. All that stuff is the activity of thought. None of it is true. None of it is helpful. Not psychologically speaking. In other words, it ways it is, but we're talking psychologically. That's more important, really. It's more essential. Anyway. So if we say there is no method to stop worrying, by which we can stop worrying, this makes... This makes sense straight away if, if, if we're receptive enough to hear it without automatically reacting, thinking it can't be true or thinking whatever it is we're thinking. Just to let this sentence stand there, it's clearly true. 
how could there possibly be a method for not worrying? After all, where is the method coming from? Apart from my worry about my worry, I'm worried about my worrying, so I have a method to not worry. So the method is the worrying. We could say that in an, in an essential sense, methods are worry, or methods are anxiety. And uh, the reason for that is because if there's a method and it's pointing at a, at a designated outcome, and therefore there's a possibility of achieving that designated outcome or not achieving it, and it's not guaranteed, no matter what we might like to think about fail-safe methods, no method is, there's risk in everything. So because there's risk in everything, there's the, we have to be cognizant of the risk that we won't achieve our goal, which is very important to us. And that equals worry. Worry comes out of absolute terms, in other words. If something is absolutely right and absolutely wrong, or it's absolutely right that I try to stop my worrying, or try to do anything else, that is worry, because I've got absolutes. Absolutes create worry. There's, there's no leeway in absolutes. If I were to look at things in another way and say, well, it's okay, it's, that's, that's fine if I stop worrying, and it's fine if I don't stop worrying, then there's no anxiety here. We might say, oh, but that type of laissez-faire attitude with regard to worrying is, how can that work? You have to stamp it out. You have to be firm. You have to be um, not so ambiguous about it, easygoing about it. But then if we do that, then we're worrying. We're back in worry territory because we've created a world made out of absolutes, a world which doesn't actually exist apart from in our own heads, we should add. So we've created an anxiety-producing world of absolutes that exists in our own heads. And the result of that is that we do worry. And as long as we're contained in that artificial world, anxiety is never going to be too far away. It might be beneath the surface, but it's always going to come up to the surface at some point, because the, the world of absolutes is inherently anxiogenic and there's nothing that can be done about that unless hypothetically we could guarantee that um, guarantee that things always happen the right way so we actually try to deny that there is a wrong way but if there is a right way there is equally always a wrong way so that's um, just fantasy we're looking it's as if we're searching for a unicorn only we're searching for a, a unipolar situation, an up without a down. So we're all, whether we realise it or not, or we, or we don't realise it, searching for a, a unipolar situation. We're searching for the unipole. Where is that damn unipole? I know it's got to be there somewhere, we say to ourselves. And everything else is on hold. The whole business of living is on hold until we find the unipole. Just winning without losing, right without wrong, yes without no, etc., etc. These are the absolute terms that we exist between. Now, when we're existing in the world that exists between the absolutes, the um, two corresponding um, complementary absolutes of yes and no, right and wrong, we imagine that there's freedom there. And we imagine that this freedom is to be found by annihilating, ex uh, extinguishing, eliminating completely the pole that we don't like, which is things not happening the right way, the way we, things not happening the way we want them to. So if we think we can actually annihilate that possibility, then we get the unipole, the things happening the right way, everything is fine. That's what we're aiming at, and we're keeping everything on hold until that happy situation comes about which it never does because it never can do, can do because um, no one gets anywhere chasing unipoles. So the answer isn't to 
exist in a, in, in, in a polar or dual world and get rid of one of the poles or get rid of one half of the duality, which is how, when we're in the system, contained in the system, that's how we see it. That's how we see the game. The game is to, using the terms of the system, escape the system, which we can't do. That's the game. So, that's what we do, and that's what we keep on doing, and that's what um, all rational life consists of. But that's not... Um, the, that's the deception. That's not the truth. The, tr the truth is that we find freedom within this absolute realm which exists between yeah, right and wrong <clears throat> by relativizing right and wrong, i.e. by seeing them for what they are, which is arbitrary construct. So we don't take right and wrong so seriously. It's like, yeah, right's okay, wrong's okay. Right's the same as wrong, really, which is equanimity. And this seems scandalous to all concerned, all good game players, because it's disrespecting the game. And it's not just disrespecting the game, it's completely devalidating and falsifying the game. That's the end of the game, which was only bullshit anyway, because it was never getting, getting us anywhere. But still, we had hope that it would, and we lived on this hope just as much as we lived in reverse fashion on the fear that it may not work out. So we live on the hope that it will, and we're also living on the fear that it won't. And that's called conditioned existence. That's what it's all about. It's not about anything else. It's all, the only components in it are hope and fear. Euphoria, the belief that the good thing's gonna happen. Dysphoria, the belief that the bad thing, which doesn't actually exist because that's a made up thing from the mind. So the hope that the good thing is going to happen, the belief that the good thing is going to happen, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here, but is euphoria and the, 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 the reversed belief is, is dysphoria. And there really isn't anything else in, <clears throat> in, the, in the conditioned realm. There can't be because the conditioned realm is made out of our thoughts and our thoughts are absolutes and our thoughts are also um, dual, polar, yes and no. And we exist within the, um, the field of possibilities that exists between yes and no, which is actually not a field of possibilities because there aren't any possibilities apart from believing blindly that we can get one without the other, which we can't. So that's that's the whole of conditioned existence, just just that. So when we talk about methods, <clears throat> as we so blindly do with, res with respect to psychological matters. We're playing the game. We're playing the duality game, or the game of not recognizing duality for what it, what it is, or the game of believing in unipoles. That's what we're doing. Methods work in the outside world. I can deploy a method to light a fire, for a fire lighter or a match, or a few sticks, or a bit of kindling, or whatever. Uh, probably if I know what I'm doing and, and the conditions are right, I can light a fire. Psychologically speaking, absolutely no way at all. There is no method for not worrying. So, the reason this is liberating, of course, is because as soon as I see that, it's not even just a statement, it's, it's, it's an overwhelming, um, flash of understanding. There is no method whereby we can stop worrying because worrying is, methods are worrying. Methods have a level of worry. Then we get to worry about our worrying and then we get another level and we worry about our worry. That's all that can ever happen when we're contained in the thought creating realm. That's all that can ever happen. There can be no transcendence of that duality. Duality doesn't transcend itself not left to its own devices, we can transcend it by not taking it so seriously. Which is something that we can't do on purpose. If I try to take, if I try to stop taking duality so seriously, which understandably I might want to do that because I can, 
but I get to the point where I see that duality has created me one heap of suffering, one hell of a load of suffering. And I think, uh, I think the answer is to not take duality so seriously. Because after all, it's only a made up thing. It's only just abstract, absolute categories that are acting as tyrants and pushing me this way and that way for, for no, for no, with no benefit in sight at all, other than being bullied just for the sake of being bullied by my own thinking mind. Just because it gets a kick out of it, maybe. Why do bullies bully? Um, the thinking mind is a bully. It's it's a bully and an abuser. If it gets the upper hand, because it was never meant to have the upper hand, because it, 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 it is a secondary principle to non-duality or to consciousness. Therefore, it can't lord it over consciousness or duality, because it doesn't even recognise it. It tries to force everything to fit in with its own understanding, which is a null understanding, because it's only a um, self-cancelling game. It never gets anywhere. So, what do I do if I want to take stop taking duality so seriously? There's no method. There's no method for not taking duality seriously. And if I get this notion that, hey, I'm going to stop taking duality so seriously, I'm actually making a dual statement. Um, and... And I'm being more serious than ever. I'm double serious, super serious. How can you have a method and not be serious? If you weren't serious, look, I, lads, I'm not really serious about it. I'd let go of the method. No need for a method if you're not being serious. There is a need for a method if you're attached to an outcome. And if you're attached to an outcome, in psychological terms, you're searching for a uni, a unipole. Where is that damn unipole? I know it has to be here somewhere, kind of thing. So that is the measure of our stupidity, if stupidity can be measured, which of course it can't really, but that is the a mark of our stupidity, our belief in unipoles, which we don't even take seriously. Not that we don't take seriously enough, but that we don't look at enough to see that it isn't, is even our belief. We don't, it's our belief. We don't even know it's our belief because we haven't looked into it enough. So, the understanding that there is no method by which we can stop ourselves worrying is also the same thing as realising that there's no method by which we can cease to be completely... Um, trapped in duality or fascinated by duality or hypnotized by duality. And that's liberating, not just with regard to, to, to worry, but it's liberating with regard to everything. Because at this point we've seen through the notion that um, The notion that purposefulness, which is the same thing as thought, which is the same thing as logic, can achieve anything useful psychologically at all. So it's it's a, it's a very um, comprehensive understanding. Nothing that is born of thought, that comes from thought, that springs from thought, that is brought about by thought is of any use at all when it comes to mental health. It's, um, not only is it of no use, it's a tyrant, it's the thing that we're trying to escape from. The tyranny of thought, the tyranny of living between the opposites, the absolutes, the tyranny of trying to adjust ourselves to a world of absolutes. So, thought is the very devil, in other words. In, the, in, this, in this respect, that very much sounds like <clears throat> I'm demonising thought, I'm devilizing thought, but only when it's got on top 
and it's trying to call the shots to everything because it's too dumb to do that and too dumb to know that it's too dumb to do that because it's only just a mechanical reflex thing. It is dumb, but that's okay for you if we hang in there and use it in a wise way. That's okay. You could say that a, um, that a monkey wrench is dumb in the sense that if we try to use it to organize the whole world, that's doesn't know. It knows how to be a monkey wrench. And that's good. It doesn't know anything beyond that. No machine can know anything beyond the functional parameters of its own machinehood. So that makes us pretty dark if we try and put a machine in charge of everything, like the machine of thought. That makes us pretty dumb. So really it's not thought that's dumb, it's us. But then when we do that, we become what thought says we are anyway, so we are thought, because who we are is not allowed within the remit of thought, because who we are does exist in terms of absolutes or mental categories. But the funny thing about this, or the, maybe it's not so funny, or it is funny, but it's also pretty, um, which is scary. The, the funny, scary thing about this is that um, no matter what insights we have, no, no matter what we try and do in, in this world of mental health, we always, 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 always put thought in charge of it. So we have all the stuff, maybe if we have some good stuff, maybe we have some quotes from Pema Chodron, and we have some of this, and we have some roomy poems, and we have all the stuff, but then we put thought in charge of it and we try and make a method out of it okay thanks for watching